today I'm going to show you how to make the mechanism for this floating easel card. Now we used flourishing phrases bundle to decorate this card, but today I'm going to be showing you how to put this together with petal palette. Now I really like how this works because the fun part is the sentiment that you can stamp on the window sheet and it makes it look like it's floating in midair. I really liked how this looked, so I wanted to show you how I put it together. Let's go ahead and get started. I have a half sheet of standard cardstock. This is in Fresh Fig and it measures four and a quarter by 11. I'm going to score it in the middle at five and a half to get a card base. And then I am going to cut out a half inch frame all the way around the front of the card. To do that, I'm going to line up the right side of my cardstock with the short edge, and I'm going to move my trimming blade up to the half inch mark on the ruler of my cutting guide. So I'm going to cut all the way down until I get half an inch away from the edge of the cardstock. And then once you have that cut, you're going to rotate it, line up the long right edge with your half inch line, and then again, do the same thing, bring your cutting blade up to the half inch mark on your ruler, and then cut down to a half an inch from the score line at the middle of the cardstock. That's the five inch mark. We're going to repeat that for the edge closest to the score line and the opposite long edge of our card front. To cut this edge here, I'm going to line up the score line with the half inch mark on my trimmer. And then again, start from the half inch and come down to a half inch from the edge. Now to get this end cut here, this last cut, I'm actually just gonna flip my cardstock over so that I can line this up with a half inch on this side. It's just easier for me to hold the majority of the cardstock to my left. Again, line up your trimmer blade with the half inch mark on the ruler and come down to a half inch from the score. Then you can just simply pop out that section and you have a half inch frame around the front of your card. Make sure that you save this piece. You can use it to cut out some framelits for decorating the front of our card. Along with that card front and the frame that we've cut out of it, you'll also need two more pieces of fresh fig cardstock. These are the same size as a standard card front, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And I've already cut both of these pieces to the half inch frame. I also have a piece of Whisper White cardstock here. This measures four inches by five and a quarter. And I've pre-stamped this with the image from our petal palette bundle. I've used this greenery piece here. We're also using the sentiment from petal palette, one of these sentiments here along with the petals and more thinlet dies to cut out our decorations. You can bundle these products right now in the Occasions catalog, which will save you 10% when you bundle. If you're a follower of mine, you know this is one of my favorite bundles, and I highly recommend this to anybody that is looking for an amazing stamp set and coordinating die set. I also have a piece of our window sheet here. Now this measures four inches by five and a quarter inches. First off, I have stamped and cut out five of these flowers, two on Whisper White using Fresh Fig Full Ink, two on Whisper White using the second generation ink. That just means I stamped these in full ink and stamped these again without re-inking my stamp. And I have one here in basic gray full ink. I have also stamped, colored, and cut out the watercolor paper of these two images. I've fussy cut them to very close where those lines are on the outside of the stamps so that I could cut out 
in Fresh Fig the die cuts that coordinate with those images. I wanted to make sure that I had a good border around those pieces so they really show well when I put them on my window sheet. And finally, out of the gold glimmer paper, I've cut these four thinlets out. Make sure that when you run these through your Big Shot, they cut very, very well. These glimmer papers have a tendency to not cut or stick in the Big Shot if you don't use layers properly or if you don't run them through several times. So just be aware when you're cutting those shapes out with the glimmer paper. So now we're going to assemble the base of our card before we do our embellishing. I'm going to start by taking my card base and I'm going to use my bone folder to crease the score line in the middle. Now when you do this part, be careful because you have that frame cut out and your cardstock won't be as strong as it is when you have a full sheet there. So I'm going to lay my frame down on the desk and bring the solid piece over and line up the edges. That way I can score my card that direction. Now I'm going to take the frame on the front of my card and I'm going to bend it backwards and fold it up on itself. So I'm meeting the corners up with the folded edge and then I'm going to crease those two little frame sides. So this is what your card should look like. We're going to set our base aside so that we can get our frame ready. Now to do that, all we're going to do is take one of our frames and adhere our window sheet down and then you're going to take your other frame and adhere it right to the top. So I'm using my fast fuse and I'm putting that all the way around the frame. I'm going to lay my window sheet on top of that. I'm going to add a little bit more fast fuse. And then I'm going to take my second frame and line that up on top. Now to adhere your frame to your card front, you're just going to put adhesive on the top portion, the top half of this frame on your card base. And then you're going to adhere your window sheet frame to that. Now you have the main mechanism for your card front. Should look something like this. I'm going to add my Whisper White background to the inside of my card. I'm going to take a couple of those flowers that I stamped and cut out earlier and using a mini glue dot, I'm going to adhere them to the Whisper White card mat on the inside of my card. That will give me a little bit of stability for my frame to hold on to when I raise it up. You want to make sure that you kind of stagger where you place your flowers so that you have different layers when you set your card frame on and up. So there's the first, or we could come down a little bit lower to the second, and you can even place a third even lower, which would be about here. But I'm just going to use those two for now. 
I'm going to stamp my sentiment directly onto the window sheet. Now you can do this step before you glue everything together, but I'm going to go ahead and stamp it now. I'm using my archival stampin' pad in basic black. And I have not had an issue with mine rubbing off. You just want to make sure that you let it dry properly before touching it to avoid smearing. I'm using the sentiment, Life is so much better with you in it from the Petal Palette stamp set. So we're gonna mount that up. Ink it up. And you wanna be careful with this step because you really only get one try. So that's why I would definitely advise you to stamp before you glue it to your card frame. But I'm living dangerously today. Be careful when you stamp down so that your stamp doesn't slide. You wanna stamp straight down and straight up. Now I'm stamping kind of in the middle of my window sheet because I'm going to have some decoration coming around the corners of my frame. All right, now it's time for the fun part. We're going to start assembling our card with all of the decorations that we've cut out. I'm going to start with all of my gold glimmer because I want that to be on the lowest layer of my card. I'm also using my fine tip glue pen for this so that I can make sure that it stays really well after it's glued and dries. And also because I still want a little bit of wiggle room in case I need to tuck something or move something around. And I have a few couple of seconds with this before it really takes hold. You could also use your adhesive sheets on the back of the glimmer paper. That would work just as well. I'm just opting to use the fine tip glue pen. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on just one side of my trellis cut out here. And I'm kind of just putting a, a couple of beads at most of those intersections. And then I'm going to put that onto the side in the middle. Again, be careful not to rub your sentiment and doing that part in advance and allowing it to dry is really the best thing that you can do when you're putting this card together yourself. Now I'm putting some adhesive on the back of my gold glimmer paper in that leaf cut out. And I'm just putting a little bit around each section here. And if you'll notice on here, I did not cut out all of those little tiny pieces in the centers of the leaves. I left those intact because I wanted to have a more solid image. So we're just gonna put that down in this corner, mostly on the window sheet, but partially on the frame. That adhesive sticks better to the frame than it does the window sheet, but it should still be okay. I'm just gonna weight it down with one of my acrylic blocks for a second to help that hold. Now I'm taking this fun piece from my glimmer paper and I'm gonna put that in the upper right corner And finally, this small flower piece here goes in the upper left. I'm going to take some dimensionals and I'm gonna put them in the corner of my frame as close to the inside window sheet as possible while still staying mostly on the frame. And I'm just going to use this piece here to kind of find my placement for those. I want to make sure that I get my image mostly on the card, especially if you want to fit this into a standard envelope. You might want to put your dimensionals on your piece first 
so that you can kind of make sure that they're in the right places. But I am not going to be mailing this card. I don't need to put it into an envelope. So I'm okay if it comes down a little bit. You just want to make sure it doesn't come too far past your bottom of your frame. Otherwise, it won't stand up properly when you tuck it behind your flowers on your inside piece. Okay, I'm going to put one dimensional on the back of this flower. And then I'm also going to put a glue dot on the back of that because I find that the glue dots tend to stick a lot better to the glimmer paper. And I want to make sure that this doesn't fall off. So we're going to stick some glue dots on the back of that. And we're going to put that up in this corner here. And then we're going to take some more glue dots and stick down our little flowers. So I'm going to start with my darker color. And I don't really necessarily want this flower in the middle, but I do want to make sure I get those leaves. So I'm just going to stick these on and kind of cover up that glimmer flower in the background there. And there we are creators. There is our really fun floating easel card using the petal palette bundle. So again, we have two options. We have that option there, or we have a little bit higher right there. So when you see it head on or face front, it looks kind of something like that when you're just looking at it. And you can see that we have that beautiful floating sentiment. And we also have some of our pieces here that seem to be floating as well. You can certainly add more accents on your window sheet. But I also like how clean it looks when it's relatively plain on the majority of the window sheet. So there are our two samples, the first one with flourishing phrases and the second with petal palette. Now absolutely hands down, this one is my favorite and I have a feeling it's going to be most of your favorites too. Let me know if you prefer the flourishing phrases. I did make this one as kind of a test to see how well it would work and then I thought to myself, you know, this really needs to be done using Petal Palette, so I'm glad that I got that in and got that made for you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today, creators. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little different format from my regular tutorials. I did not show you any stamping or cutting. Mostly, I wanted to show you the technique on how to put the easel together and then a decorating suggestion if you're using the Petal Palette Bundle. I also want to let you know that I may not be uploading a video every day like I have been for the past month or so. I am going to try and focus on a few things and get some affairs in order, but I will still be posting several tutorials every week. So be sure to keep checking back at melissascreations.com for updates. You can also follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mcreations, which is one of the best ways to get current information and up-to-date info for all of my happenings and announcements if I am not going to be posting on a certain day. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest with the handle at mcreations. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.